every regular army strives for a standard weapon. The Americans have used the fabled M16. The Russians have deployed the dependable AK series. In the days of the Raj, the British used the controversial Lee Enfield throughout their empire. A standard weapon is required to equalize the training and preparedness of forces across the board. It is vital for implementing uniformity during wartime and also makes logistics simpler. This is the G3, the Pakistan Army's mainstay battle weapon. Every soldier and officer undergoes training on it. The G3 is not exactly cutting-edge personal assault rifle technology. Originally produced in the 1950s by Heckler & Koch, the origins of the G3 can be traced back to World War II's Mauser-made STG-45. In Pakistan, variants in use by the military are locally produced. Manufactured are the G3A3 and the G3P4, the latter having the facility of a retractable stock. The rifle has a sturdy 7.62 caliber and is designed for semi-automatic and fully automatic modes, meant to be fired from any shooting position. Its low cost, particularly because it is manufactured locally in several countries, has helped its case. Let's talk about the weapon. Why has the Pakistan Army chosen this particular weapon? Is it is it user friendly? What is the what is the psychology behind this being Pakistan Army's favorite weapon? Yes, this weapon can be used at a varied ra range, but uh, not obviously in uh, mountainous range and at the snow line snow line range. Less that area, this weapon can be used in the plains of Punjab. This is uh, the most widely uh, used weapon, and uh, one thing about its range, its caliber. It is 7.62 caliber and it is not the caliber you in vogue in armies these days but still you know difference uh, between calibers is that this is the type of caliber which is used to kill the enemy not to incapacitate the enemy and this is uh, you know one um, basic idea behind using this weapon as a main army weapon you said to kill the enemy not to incapacitate yes, the enemy not to incapacitate. so its purpose then i think is a, is a simple one it's to win the war isn't it sure right but there are drawbacks weapons reviews say that the gun is too heavy compared to most modern assault rifles of other armies which on average weigh no more than three and a half kilograms the pakistani g3a3 weighs a hefty four and a half kilos. Considering infantry troops move with heavy backpacks carrying munitions and supplies during wartime, this is a major shortcoming. Also compared to the mainstay rifles of other armies, the G3 has the least effective range. Another issue is its control. Because it has what is referred to as a design to kill 7.62 caliber, the gun is almost uncontrollable during fully automatic firing, basically due to the powerful recoil generated by its bullet which disallows accurate aiming. That is why the army trains its soldiers to fire this weapon in semi-automatic mode. This delivers accuracy and economy at the same time. Though at one stage, more than 50 countries either deployed or manufactured the G3 worldwide, most Western forces have now phased out the weapon. Similarly, militaries from many developing countries are also dropping the weapon and moving on to new, more versatile assault rifles. But considering that the G3 is a totally indigenously produced weapon, from its muzzle to its stock, the army stands by this dependable machine. For a country which has suffered from a series of arms embargoes, such independence is vital for national security. But the Pakistani G3 is a battle veteran, though ironically, not in Pakistan. In the 1980s, the Sri Lankan government purchased a few thousand Pakistani-made G3A3s to fight against the Tamil Tigers with some success. But now, those rifles have been replaced.
As for Pakistan, the G3 has not seen all-out frontline action in a total war. It was used by the Army, the Rangers and the Frontier Corps during what are called internal security operations in interior Sindh and Karachi in the 90s and later Balochistan. But during the Kargil conflict with India in 1999, the rifle was not the weapon of choice. There was a political purpose for not widely deploying the G3 in that specific operation. For its possible recovery by the Indians would have been evidence of official military involvement from the Pakistani side, a fact which was denied by the administration at the time. We talked to a former trooper of the NLI, a Kargil veteran, about the performance of the machine in such high altitudes. He preferred to stay anonymous. That is why perhaps in another conflict, in another part of the country, the G3 is not the only weapon being used by the army. Most of Fata and Swath is a ridge-lined and mountainous area, and engagements with militants do not usually exceed more than a few hundred meters. The weapons of choice in Fata and Swath, at least for the militants, are dated and modern variants of the famous or infamous AK-47. Recently, the army and paramilitary troops have had to adapt and are using different versions of the AK in regular and special forces operations in that new theater of conflict. There is no doubt that when it was introduced, the G3 was a dependable weapon. Till Pakistan faced a threat in the plains and deserts from across its eastern border, it was the right choice for its forces. But today, as the security environment and the theater of conflict have changed, there is a need for Pakistani forces to evolve their weaponry as well. Still, the G3 is what it is. The best friend of the Pakistani infantrymen.